there. Today for dinner, we're going to have roasted tomato and white bean stew. Sounds yummy. No, I haven't tried it yet. Actually, I find that most of the recipes I make these days, I'm trying new things because there's so many wonderful things out there. So anyway, let's get started with this one and I'll tell you what you need for it. You're gonna need two packages of cherry tomatoes. I have two different kinds because last week I got these, not knowing I needed two. So these, you know, I went shopping today and bought another one. Oops. I'm also going to need two teaspoons of lemon zest. And let me get my lemon. Here is my lemon. I have a lemon tree in the yard, but it's Meyer lemons and the skin is so thin that I just thought maybe I should just buy one, so I did. Okay, so lemon zest. We're gonna need, um, oh, some Italian parsley. This is Italian parsley. It's Italian parsley because the leaves are flat. It's not exactly that curly parsley that we're used to, to having. Uh, some people call this flat leaf parsley, same thing. We're also going to need some olive oil, and I'm just going to use plain extra virgin olive oil from Trader Joe's. And I'm going to need two cans of uh, white beans, cannellini, or I don't know, maybe butter beans if you have those. Uh, those aren't real common around here, but I think it would be delicious. Going to need some fake chicken broth and some garlic. Uh, I'm going to need an onion, a medium-sized white onion, and some crushed red pepper, or red pepper flakes like you put on pizzas. Let me see if that's everything. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Oh, I'm going to need some fresh thyme. And I have some of that in my yard, so I'll go get it and show you. The first thing we need to do is to cut up a half cup of this Italian parsley and um, get some lemon zest and mix those two together. So here we go. Here's my parsley. I've already washed it and I broke off the stems that were kind of far down so I could get all the leaves bunched up together at the top. Just makes it easier to cut them and um, you know keep the stems out. So that's about a half cup it will be. So here we go. We're just gonna chop. A little bit of leaf there. Look at that. That's good enough. Okay, so there's my parsley. Put it in a small bowl. Okay, then. my lemon, which I have washed, and I'm going to need two teaspoons full or pretty much the zest from one lemon. So I have this wonderful tool. It's a microplane. Very, very sharp. In fact, I do have a glove in there that sometimes I use when I'm going to um, be grating. This grates fine, so it's perfect for getting the zest off of a citrus. So I'm just gonna just get the yellow and it's really good about that. You can see that uh, you know it just takes the very top. So I decided I should get my safety glove on here. This safety glove will keep you from getting cut. So very good. I'm not going to test it. Anyway let's get back to this um, lemon. 
Gotta get the zest. Okay, that looks like about two teaspoons full. Now I wanna say, when you're gonna clean up, never ever touch this part. Uh, not when you're cleaning, not when you're, when you're zesting, just don't ever touch that part with your hand. I'm gonna use a knife to just kinda try to scoop out from the back any, anything that didn't fall through. I hate to waste. Now the way I clean this is I put it in the sink, holding the handle, swoosh it around, and I have a brush. I'll show you my brush. I have, I have a brush and I just brush it to clean it. But don't leave it out to dry because then it'll be harder to clean. Okay, so I'm gonna put this together with my parsley. And I'm going to mix it. It says mix it with your hands. I don't know why I couldn't use a spoon. Ooh, that's so pretty. Check it out. Can you see the little yellow flecks? Also, it smells good. Okay, there's that. Now we're gonna set that aside. And set this aside. And then you need some kind of dish that you can bake in. Okay. I'm using a glass, a nine, nine by 13. Uh, you don't have to have this, but if you have like a, sh something that's, you know, like a sheet pan or big, that's good because what we're going to do is roast these tomatoes. So here's the tomatoes. I just remembered I should be, I should have told you to um, preheat the oven to 425. I'm not because I actually have something in the oven right now. So um, I'm waiting for that to be done because it's 350. Okay, so right, preheat 425. So here's my tomatoes in the dish, and I didn't dry them. I drained them, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So I need to put in a quarter of a cup of olive oil, and I'm just gonna use a dry measure because I'm standing right here over it. And because if I use a liquid measure, I'm gonna get oil all over the inside and I won't get as much out. So here we go. Quarter of a cup of olive oil. all over these guys get all that good stuff out and here's my time so this is a task that I don't love but I do love having nice fresh ingredients so what you have to do is the leaves at the tip are um, are on a kind of a soft part of the stem. So it's gonna easily break off. But once you get that, get past that first part, you can just do this. Just pull the leaves off. So a few sprigs. Actually, yeah, it's actually supposed to be a tablespoon of thyme leaves and I'm just estimating do one more and you know they're this grows in my yard so that's why I have it looking like this kind of tedious but eh, when you get these little guys eh, that's annoying and if you pull off the whole tip then just break it up Okay, I'm not gonna make you watch every little bit of this, so um, I think you got it. Here, I'll do this one. Okay, I pulled off all the leaves, almost all the leaves, and now I'm just gonna kinda mix it around together. And if your oven is at 425 degrees already, you can put this in. You're gonna bake that, you're gonna roast them actually for, about 20 to 25 minutes 
or until they're kind of golden around the edges. My oven is still not hot enough, so I'm just gonna set that aside and get some other ingredients ready. I'll start with this onion that needs to be sliced, peeled and sliced. So I think we're gonna have thin slices of onion. Yeah, thinly sliced. So here's what we're gonna do. Cut off the, the ends. Remove the um, skin. There's another part I'm not thrilled with. Sometimes it's hard to do this. I've removed the skin. Now the easiest way to thinly slice or to slice an onion is to cut it in half this way first. And then put it down and slice it like this. By thin, I go for that of an, an eighth of an inch. That's a thinly sliced onion. So go ahead and do that with both of those halves. I need a whole onion and uh, we'll see what's next. I've sliced my onions and my oven is now at 425. So I'm going to put my tomatoes in the oven and set the timer for, I think, 25 minutes. Let's see. Well, yeah, 25 minutes. I forgot to tell you to also put a little bit of salt and however much black pepper as you want on those tomatoes before you put them in the oven. Okay, next thing is we're supposed to have three large garlic cloves and my my garlic cloves aren't large, so I'm just going to I'm just going to put in this much. So I'm going to cut off the ends and this one's got a got a spot that I don't like, so I'm going to cut that away. There. And then, you've seen me do this before. Cut this stuff away. And get rid of these. And here we go. We're going to slice. Or if you've got another way you like to deal with garlic, go ahead. I actually have ordered myself a, uh, a new kind of garlic mincer. I'll show you when it comes. Okay, now it's sliced. Now we're just gonna go this way. Chop, 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 chop. This way. Whoops. Get stuff out of the way. And do it some more. I think that's good enough. Notice I'm using the back of the of the blade to scrape off my fingers to scrape off the garlic off my fingers. I'm not gonna scrape off my fingers. Okay, so then I need to drain these and rinse them, and I think we're gonna be ready to go. I'm ready to put this all together and make this stew. So. Here's my Dutch oven. I'm gonna use that tonight. Okay, so first, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons full of olive oil in the pot. What is that? Some kind of crumb. Okay. That's about right. So I'm gonna heat that up. like a medium high. Get myself a nice wooden spoon. I 
and I'm going to add the onions and the garlic. So there's my onions. Onion, it was only one. There was a whole one. And here's my garlic. Okay, so it's got to get hot. So I'm going to put on the lid and let it get hot. In addition to the um, onions and garlic, almost forgot, you need to add your red pepper flakes. You don't have to use this, but you know, it does give it a nice little zip. There's that. And it's um, pretty nice and hot now. So I'm going to put that lid back on and turn the heat down just a little bit to like a medium. And let it go for four or five minutes. Okay, it's nicely done. Maybe more done than it has to be, but looks good to me. So I'm going to put in the beans, which are all rinsed. Drain and rinse. Stir that up. And now you can use the back of a wooden spoon if you want. I'm going to use my potato masher. I want to just mash some of the beans. And that's going to make my soup a little bit thicker. I'm not trying to get all of them. Actually, the recipe says to get a half cup. I don't know what a half cup is in here. Let's get some of them. And put in one and a half cups of stock. This is water. One and a half cups. And here's my vegetarian chicken flavoring. Okay. says season with salt and pepper. You know these recipes that have you add salt and pepper to every step? What's the point? I mean, couldn't you just add all the salt and pepper you need? I'm not going to add any more salt because, as you know, my um, broth mix is very salty, but I will add more pepper because I love freshly ground black pepper. So here goes. could mash more beans if you want. I think I'll just go with that. Now I'm just waiting for about two more minutes for the um, tomatoes to be done. So I'm just going to put my lid back on, keep it at medium, and in a couple of minutes I'll put those tomatoes right in there. The tomatoes are done and I took them out of the oven. They are not um, yellow. It said golden, but they are toasty brown. Doesn't it look nice? So all I have to do now is put that in the soup, stir it up, let the whole thing simmer for a while, and we got some stew. So here goes. Sure you get all that goodness with the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. So 
So, I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm going to simmer it for about five to ten minutes until I just can't stand it anymore and I have to eat some. The soup is simmering and I'm going to have a taste, see if I need to adjust anything. When you serve this, put it in a, it says a shallow bowl. Oh, I forgot to tell you where I got this recipe. It's from the New York Times. So anyway, you put it in a bowl. They say shallow, whatever. Remember that parsley and lemon? You can sprinkle that on top and serve it like that. Oh, let's go taste. Oh, nice. I can see that, that the ingredients are blending together. That's good. see what it tastes like. Mm. Oh, that's good. All right. So I'm just going to turn it off because we're not quite ready to eat. Oh, I love that red pepper flakes. You got to try it with the red pepper flakes. It's it gives, it gives you just a little bit of warmth back there in the back of your mouth. Okay, that's it.